Letitia was over the moon with happiness. She and her husband were moving to one of the most beautiful and prestigious neighborhoods in the city. Magnificent mansions had long been the fruit of her fantasies, but she and her husband weren't wealthy enough to afford such luxuries. But then luck smiled upon them, and her husband's business began to rapidly expand. Over the course of a couple of years, he managed to accumulate a decent capital, and for their upcoming wedding anniversary, Javier decided to delight his beloved wife by purchasing a two-story mansion with a small garden, where fruit trees grew and luxurious flowers blossomed in the flower beds. The house amazed Leticia with its stunning interiors. Enchanted, she wandered through the rooms, running her hand over the patterns of the wallpaper, examining antique figurines and picturesque paintings. She held a notebook in her hands, making notes on what items were missing in the house and what needed to be gotten rid of or replaced. Leticia was particularly taken with the bedroom, which was decorated in shades of cornflower blue. There was a wide double bed, covered with a bedspread embroidered with silver threads, a dark brown dresser, a large comfortable wardrobe, and a mirror in a beautiful frame. Heavy curtains allowed the bedroom to be comfortably dimmed, and Letitia imagined how wonderful it would be to relax and sleep there. In contrast, the living room was decorated in all shades of yellow, making it cheerful and very welcoming. However, as she surveyed the room, Letitia couldn't help but frown. Something was clearly missing here. The walls are too bare, she decided and made a note in her notebook. I need to find some suitable paintings to complement the interior. After finishing inspecting the house, satisfied with herself, Letitia got into the car and headed home to prepare dinner for her husband. Javier returned late, as usual, with a lot of work. He happily ate a plate of mushroom risotto and thanked his wife. Did you visit the new house today? Was there a lot of work? He asked. The rooms and kitchen are in very good condition, Letitia replied. I like everything. Honestly, I'm absolutely thrilled. There are a few things that need to be replaced, of course, but those are just minor details. I made a bunch of notes in my notebook. Tomorrow I'm going shopping to buy everything that's missing. Javier hugged his wife and kissed her on the cheek. You're such a clever one, he said affectionately. Letitia smiled in response. I think by next week, we'll be able to move into our new home, she announced solemnly. Excellent, Javier replied. I'm really looking forward to it. The next day, Letitia went shopping. She bought hangers, a coffee table, a mirror for the bathroom, new curtains, and then headed to the art gallery. Luck was on her side. There was a sale this week. Letitia walked around the spacious rooms of the gallery for a long time, examining the paintings, but nothing appealed to her. Many paintings predominated with sad shades of blue, and Letitia really wanted to preserve and emphasize the feeling of joy and warmth that the living room in their new home evoked. Letitia was almost despairing of finding anything suitable when suddenly, in the corner of the room, she noticed a small canvas that immediately caught her attention. The painting depicted a young girl. She appeared to be no more than 18 years old. The girl had curly chestnut hair, a turned-up nose covered with freckles, and a rebellious fringe. She was sitting on the grass in a light yellow dress with a wreath of dandelions on her head. The whole painting was literally saturated with the atmosphere of a sunny noonday and the love that the artist felt for the girl. And this love was so palpable in every stroke that Letitia couldn't help but feel goosebumps. She leaned over and took the painting in her hands. Yes, it perfectly suited the living room and seemed to have been custom made for their new home with Javier. I wonder who the author is. Letitia searched for a signature and noticed the initials EA in the corner of the canvas. They didn't tell her anything. The girl looked at the price and gasped. The painting cost practically nothing. How strange. Letitia thought. She knew a bit about painting, as she had studied art history quite extensively at university and could confidently say that the creator of the canvas was a master of his craft, not a casual amateur. The painting exuded innate talent, deep knowledge, and years of experience. So why was his creation so cheap? Letitia decided to ask the owner of the gallery about this, a fragile woman with delicate wrists and almost translucent blue eyes, whose artistic nature and artistic mindset were immediately evident. 
Oh, this painting, exclaimed the owner. I also stared at it for a long time. Isn't it a wonder? Only a true master of the brush can convey the carefree and lightness of a beautiful summer day like this. There's definitely a piece of his soul left in this painting. I'm impressed too, Letitia admitted, but why was it priced so low? I would pay much more for it. The gallery owner nodded. You're right, she said. I was also very surprised. However, that's the price set by the author of the painting himself. She shrugged and gestured with her hand. Letitia nodded in response, still feeling puzzled. I'll take it, she told the owner and asked, do you give any percentage of the sale to the artist? The woman shook her head. They sent me this painting from Europe. Unfortunately, I don't know the name of the author, and I don't have any contact information for them, so even if I wanted to, I couldn't send them anything. Letitia took out the necessary amount of money from her wallet and handed it to the woman. Refusing packaging, she thanked the owner and left the gallery, carefully carrying the painting in her hands. Letitia placed it on the back seat of her car and drove to the new home. There, she put the canvas on the couch in the living room and admired it for a while. You will become a real decoration of this place, Letitia whispered to the painting. Then she busied herself with other things for a while, but before leaving, she glanced at the canvas again, feeling the same joyful feeling that had overcome her at the first sight of the young girl in the yellow dress. Letitia left the house in high spirits. A week later, she and Javier moved into the new home. With a smile, they toured the transformed rooms, and her husband gently kissed Letitia. I told you, you're a genius. You handled everything yourself. Javier praised Letitia and added, It's so cozy and nice here. I feel like I want to live here. They both laughed, and then Letitia took her husband's hand and led him to the living room. There's one thing I couldn't manage, the girl confessed, nodding towards the painting. It needed to be hung on the wall, but I don't know how to drive nails. Javier smiled. You're a real woman, and that's why I adore you, he said, and went to the pantry for tools. In a quarter of an hour, the painting was hanging on the wall, and Letitia was absolutely happy. Now let's go to a restaurant and celebrate this event. Javier suggested, but his wife shook her head. No, let's spend this evening in our new home. I'll cook something delicious if you don't mind waiting a bit. Javier agreed. Dinner was a great success. Letitia always cooked wonderfully. Javier wiped his mouth with a napkin and leaned back on the soft chair. Your food is tastier than in a restaurant, he praised his wife. Letitia smiled gratefully. By the way, do you know who our neighbors are? Javier suddenly asked. The girl shook her head. She got up from the table and started to gather the empty plates. And who are they? Any celebrities? Javier shook his head. Not at all. It's an elderly couple. They live alone in a huge mansion. I think it's twice the size of ours. Pleasant people? Quite. You can tell they're educated and there's something to talk about with them. Letitia put the plates in the sink and returned for the glasses. So why don't we invite them to dinner? She suggested. Why not? Javier shrugged. I think it would be quite appropriate and even commendable on our part. Tomorrow I'll stop by and invite them for Saturday dinner. Excellent. Letitia agreed. And I'll think about the menu. On Saturday evening, when the whole house seemed to be permeated with delicious aromas, the doorbell rang. Standing on the doorstep was an elderly couple. He's tall, gray-haired, but still attractive man. She's a petite, fragile woman with a fashionable haircut. Letitia and Javier greeted the guests with warm handshakes. We are very pleased to meet you, the elderly lady said friendly. She had a soft and rather low voice, and she created a very pleasant impression. My name is Alona, and this is my husband Federico. We are very grateful to you for the invitation. Javier introduced his wife. Dinner is ready, Letitia replied with a polite smile. Please, come to the living room. With these words, she headed forward, showing the elderly couple the way. 
Nodding, Ilona and Federico followed her. Javier brought up the rear. Leticia paused for a moment, pondering where to seat the guests, so she didn't immediately notice what had happened. As soon as the guests crossed the threshold of the yellow room, both spouses froze in place. Ilona gasped in amazement and covered her mouth with her hand. Federico paled. Javier almost bumped into the guests, but stopped just in time, not understanding what had happened. Leticia turned around, about to say something, and then noticed the confusion on the faces of the elderly people. Both of them were staring at something on the wall. Leticia turned her head and saw that they were staring intently at the painting of the girl with a dandelion wreath. Is something wrong? Javier clarified. This painting. Ilona whispered quietly. And what about it? Leticia was surprised. Ilona nervously swallowed, not saying a word. She. I know this girl, the woman finally spoke. We both know her, Federico added. The gazes of both spouses clouded over as if they mentally traveled somewhere very far away. Edward, are you ready? Ilona shouted from below. She had already thrown on a thin cardigan over her shoulders and was impatiently tapping her index finger on the railing of the stairs leading to the second floor. There was the room of their only son, Eduardo. Yes, Mom, coming down, he replied, hurriedly stuffing a stack of notebooks and a pencil case with pencils into his backpack. Just a minute. Hurry up, there's only half an hour left before school and there will probably be traffic on the road. Ilona reminded. Eduardo attended a prestigious business school. His parents wanted him to follow in his father's footsteps, who was a successful businessman. Eduardo himself, to be honest, didn't think much about the future. He was only 14, and his life consisted of friends, soccer, trips out of town, and camping in the mountains. That day was as ordinary as can be. The boy came back from school on the school bus, quickly had a snack, and went to kick the ball at the old stadium, which was a few blocks away from his home. He met his friends there almost every day. This place was different from the luxurious neighborhood where Eduardo lived, so he never told his parents that he went there. The abandoned stadium was in the heart of the old town, surrounded by a maze of narrow streets where quite poor families lived. They hung their laundry right on the streets, and their children played with stones in the dust of the pavement. Eduardo liked that he had his own personal, secret life that his mom and dad didn't know about. It made him feel grown up in his own eyes. Some of the friends he played soccer with were from his school, others were locals. Eduardo never behaved arrogantly towards them. In the game, everyone was equal. From the poor kids, the boy learned and even picked up many inappropriate words. He thought it was cool to talk like that, but of course, he carefully filtered his speech in front of his parents. Eduardo and his friends lazily kicked the ball when suddenly they heard barking and squealing. Attracted by the sounds, the boys ran to see what was happening. Turning around the corner of the neighboring building, they found themselves in a small alley where they saw the following scene. Several large stray dogs, growling threateningly, surrounded a small ginger and white dog. Nearby stood a girl, trying to fend off the dogs with a stick. Eduardo gave her a quick glance. Chestnut curls, brown eyes, clothes clearly boyish and not fitting her size. Probably handed down from an older brother, Eduardo decided and looked away. The boy didn't suspect at the time that this encounter would change his entire life. Hey, Marissa, what's going on here? shouted one of the poor boys. They attacked Pedro, the girl replied, almost in tears. Wait, don't interfere, we'll scare them off ourselves, said the boy. He took the stick from her and fearlessly moved towards the stray dogs. It was clear that he was not used to facing difficulties face to face. Eduardo was even involuntarily impressed by him. The dogs growled, but feeling the fearlessness emanating from the boy, they tucked their tails and retreated. The other boys chased them away with shouts and loud cheers. Well, that's it. The boy said happily, throwing away the stick, and bent down to pat the ginger and white puppy behind the ear. Pedro, you have nothing to be afraid of anymore. Then he stood up and smiled at Marissa. And you better not try to deal with them yourself anymore, he said sternly. Call us right away. 
We're always hanging out at the stadium. Marissa nodded. Who's that? asked Eduardo when the girl and Pedro left. A neighbor, the boy replied. I've known her since we were babies. Eduardo nodded and immediately forgot about the girl and her dog. But Marissa and Pedro started coming to the stadium often. The girl would sit on the old half-rotten bleachers and watch the game attentively. Eduardo, for some reason unknown to himself, began to find himself looking forward to her appearance each time. He would constantly glance in Marissa's direction and miss passes. Hey, stop daydreaming, someone shouted at him. Eduardo bit his lip and mentally vowed not to look in the girl's direction anymore. The next day, as if hearing his words, she didn't come. Eduardo felt disappointment and annoyance. When he got home, he sat at his desk and started doodling silly scribbles in his notebook. Then he managed to draw a face with big eyes, and he saw Marissa in it. Eduardo tore the scribbled sheet out of the notebook, ripped it up, and threw himself onto his bed. The next day he was at the stadium again, wondering if Marissa would come. It was overcast that day, clouds hung low over the city, warning that rain could start at any moment. Perhaps that's why the stadium was unusually empty. Eduardo was kicking the old worn-out ball alone, which no one ever took home. Suddenly, he heard a dog barking and turned around. And there she was, she came. Eduardo himself didn't understand why his face broke into a silly but happy smile. He quickly put on a serious look and started playing soccer with determination. Marissa sat on the bleachers and didn't take her eyes off him, occasionally glancing at Pedro, who was running around the field like crazy. Finally, Eduardo ran out of energy and approached the bleachers to take a water bottle from his backpack. Involuntarily, he glanced at the girl. Today she was wearing baggy dark blue jeans and a large red and white t-shirt with a bull image on it. Eduardo briefly met the girl's big brown eyes and quickly looked away. Are you afraid of me? He heard her ask. Where did you get that idea? Eduardo protested. I just feel it, the girl simply said. Eduardo forced himself to look at her. She stared back intently. You're from the rich kids, aren't you? Marissa said, squinting her eyes. For some reason, Eduardo felt embarrassed, as if being rich meant something bad. Not really, he mumbled. Do you have a big beautiful house? She asked. Eduardo nodded. And a car? The girl continued to ask. Yeah, my parents do, Eduardo said. So, you're rich, Marissa concluded. Eduardo shrugged. Does it matter? He asked. It does. I'd like to become rich, the girl said. And then what? I could do whatever I want, Marissa admitted and help others. Eduardo pondered. Does he always do what he wants? He goes to school because he has to. Plays soccer because all his friends do. Marissa stared at him intently with her deep dark eyes, and Eduardo felt strange. As if he had just woken up and couldn't remember where he was. What are you thinking about? The girl asked. Eduardo shrugged. He didn't know how to put into words what he was feeling. A raindrop suddenly fell on his forehead. The boy looked up at the sky with concern. It looks like it's going to rain soon. Or maybe even poor, Marissa replied nonchalantly. The second drop hit Eduardo's hand. We need to leave, Eduardo said seriously, pulling his hood over his head. Are you coming? Marissa jumped off the bleachers and called Pedro. The rain intensified with each passing moment. By the time they reached the stadium exit, it had turned into a downpour. Eduardo looked around for shelter when he felt Marissa grab his hand. This way, she shouted abruptly, Let's run. And Eduardo followed the girl. She confidently led him along the winding alley. They ducked under the arch of one of the old buildings and caught their breath. The downpour formed a wall separating them from the rest of the world. Not a bad spot, Eduardo remarked. The main thing is, it's dry, Marissa added, and they both laughed. The girl stood very close, and Eduardo felt her breath on his cheek. He wanted to move away, 
afraid that Marissa would hear how loudly his heart was pounding, but there was no room. He took a deep breath and smelled her hair, which had something of the forest and wild grass, as well as the scent of mint and blooming cherry blossoms. Eduardo closed his eyes for a moment, and imagination carried him far away. An old poor artist lives here, he heard Marissa's voice and opened his eyes. Right in this house. In the basement. Really? Eduardo was surprised. He thought artists always lived in large bright studios, where there was plenty of light and space, and where all the walls were adorned with picturesque canvases. Marissa nodded. Do you want to visit him? I've known him for ages. Sometimes he treats me and other kids to candies. But he's usually very busy. He paints all day long. Wow, was all Eduardo could say. Truth be told, hardly anyone buys them, Marissa added with sadness in her voice. The rain subsided slightly, drumming lightly on the puddles that now adorned the battered pavement. Let's go, said Marissa, taking Eduardo's hand again. She led him along the building to a tiny entrance. After climbing a few high steps, the kids descended into the basement and found themselves at a door painted dark green. Marissa grabbed the handle and pulled the door towards her. It turned out to be unlocked. It never locks, Marissa explained as she entered first. Eduardo followed her inside. Instantly, sharp smells of oil paints and solvents assaulted his nose. Closing his eyes, the boy coughed. He wanted to get back outside as soon as possible, to breathe in the fresh air after the rain, but when he opened his eyes, he beheld an entire magical world. The spacious room was packed with canvases and huge paintings depicting fairy tales. Fairies and elves, dwarfs and dragons, princesses and mermaids, monsters and giants lived on the canvases. The impression from the paintings intensified thanks to the fact that the basement room was illuminated by the only source of light, a solitary bulb in an unshaded floor lamp. In the dimness of the room, everything seemed fantastical, as if Marissa had led Eduardo through some invisible portal to a parallel universe. The boy had never felt anything like it before. In the center of the room stood an easel, behind which sat an old, hunched-over man. He didn't turn around at the kid's footsteps. Apparently, the artist was hard of hearing or deeply immersed in his creative process. Signor Emiliano. Marissa called out and, approaching closer, gently touched his shoulder. The artist startled and finally turned around. Ah, Signorita Marissa, he replied grandly. I am pleased to welcome you to my humble abode. And is this your young friend? Yes, the girl nodded. His name is Eduardo. The old man stood up and extended a dry, wrinkled hand, stained with paint. The artist's shirt and pants were also covered in colorful stains, as if he were some unseen rainbow creature. Don't worry, the paint has already dried, Eduardo winked at the old man, and the boy shook his hand confidently. Signor Emiliano looked at him attentively. So, you also want to become an artist? He suddenly asked. It was so unexpected that the boy was taken aback. No, Marissa answered for Eduardo. He's from a wealthy family. He'll probably be a company director, right? With these words, Marissa glanced slyly at Eduardo. For some reason, he blushed. I. Well, yes, my dad wants me to continue his business, Eduardo replied. Signor Emiliano didn't take his eyes off the boy. But I immediately sensed the nature of an artist in you, he said thoughtfully, squinting, then turned to Marissa. Look at his long fingers. Marissa grabbed Eduardo's hand. Indeed, Signor Emiliano. They're so long, she nodded and chuckled. And here I thought he only knew how to kick a ball. Eduardo quickly hid his hand in his pocket, but Marissa caught the gesture. Don't worry so much, she reassured the boy. Signor Emiliano is just joking. He sees art everywhere. Eduardo nodded. Your paintings are beautiful, he said. They spent a little more time with the artist before heading home. Marissa had to prepare dinner for the whole family. Her mom had recently given birth to a baby. 
As Eduardo walked home through the winding streets, the dimly lit room and the magical paintings of the old artist stayed in his mind. The boy was impressed. When he arrived home, his parents were not there. Eduardo found a note on the fridge. I'm visiting a friend. Dad is working. It will be late. Dinner is in the fridge. Kisses, the neat lines written by his mom's hand read. Eduardo didn't bother reheating dinner. Taking some cookies from the basket on the table, he went upstairs. In his room, he lay on the bed and pondered. Could the old artist have been telling the truth? Eduardo suddenly felt a strong desire to pick up a pencil. He got up, sat at the table, and took out a notebook from the drawer. Remembering his silly scribbles, he smiled. He drew a few hesitant lines, then his hand steadied, and after a few minutes, Marissa appeared on the sheet of paper, looking almost alive. Eduardo thought for a moment and drew fairy wings behind her back. I'll show the drawing to Signor Emiliano tomorrow, Eduardo decided. The next day, instead of going to the football field, the boy went to the artist's workshop. On the way, he felt uncertain. What if his drawing was silly and talentless? But he immediately remembered Signor Emiliano's words, which gave him strength. In the workshop, everything was as it was yesterday, the same magical atmosphere, the same subdued light, and the smell of paint. The old artist was again so engrossed in his work that he didn't hear anything around him. Eduardo approached and touched his shoulder. Ah, it's you, my boy. Hello, Signor Emiliano, Eduardo said nervously. I wanted to show you something. He took out the folded drawing of Marissa from his pocket and handed it to the old man. Signor Emiliano, squinting, carefully examined the lines. His hand, holding the paper, trembled slightly. Eduardo waited patiently, but Signor Emiliano didn't speak for a long time. Just when the boy thought something was wrong with the drawing, the old man spoke up. Very precise lines. And what resemblance? I recognized little Marissa right away, he said. Eduardo smiled. The praise was gratifying to him. But that's not the main thing, added the artist. In your drawing, there's a soul. And flight. And also, love. With these words, the old man tore his gaze away from the drawing and looked into the boy's eyes. Eduardo felt embarrassed. I just... I don't know how it happened. The old man smiled cunningly. Marvelous, he said. If you want, stay, draw with me. Eduardo almost jumped in surprise. Really? Can I? He clarified. Why not? Responded old Emiliano. There are clean canvases, paints, brushes. Take them and draw whatever your soul desires. Eduardo nodded. He didn't know what would come out of it, but he really wanted to try. From that day on, he started coming to Emiliano's workshop almost every day. The boy brought new lamp, canvases, and paints, which he bought with his pocket money because he realized that all this was very expensive and the old man couldn't afford it. Signor Emiliano grew very fond of Eduardo. He enjoyed passing on his knowledge, and besides, the boy was an excellent student. He knew how to listen, and most importantly, he learned very quickly. He has a gift from nature, the old man thought to himself. You can't just bury him in the ground and forget about him. This talent is meant to bring benefit and joy to people. Marissa also often visited Emiliano's workshop to see how things were progressing. Sometimes she posed for Eduardo. The boy and the girl became friends, but for Eduardo, Marissa was more than just a friend. The boy often walked her home, and this day was no exception. On the way, they chatted about dreams and plans. As they approached Marissa's house, Eduardo felt his heart beating even faster. He realized that this was the moment he had been waiting for. When they stopped in front of her house, Eduardo turned to her, looking straight into her eyes. He saw the sparkle and warmth in them, which melted his fears. Shall we meet tomorrow? He asked, feeling his voice tremble with excitement. Marissa smiled back at him. Yes, let's meet by the workshop, just like today, she replied, her voice soft and confident. Eduardo approached her as if drawn by a magnet. 
He felt her warmth and breath on his face. He leaned in and gently kissed her lips. The first kiss was like magic. For both of them, it was a moment of complete transparency when they opened their hearts to each other. In this kiss were embedded their hopes, dreams, and feelings that they had kept inside. After the kiss, Marissa shyly lowered her head. Is something wrong? Eduardo worried. Everything's fine, Marissa replied quietly. Just. What? You're rich, after all, the girl said. Your parents would never allow you to associate with me. Eduardo hugged her and whispered. They'll have to accept it, he replied decisively. Several years passed. Eduardo and Marissa continued to meet secretly, and the young man went to Senor Emiliano's workshop several times a week to paint. The final exams were approaching, followed by admission to the business college that Eduardo's father had chosen for him. In essence, admission to it was just a formality his father knew the director and all the teachers very well and had long since arranged with them that his son would study there. However, Eduardo himself had long been doubting whether he really wanted to follow in his father's footsteps. The path of an artist enticed him and wouldn't let him go. At night, he dreamed of unwritten paintings, and he often jumped out of bed to quickly sketch what he had seen in his dreams. He was simply obsessed with painting, shapes, colors, textures, and everything related to it. Marissa always supported Eduardo. Their relationship was cloudless, but the fact that her boyfriend's parents still didn't know about them troubled the girl. You need to tell them everything, Marissa often said. Eduardo just nodded in response, but couldn't bring himself to take any action. And then the hot season of exams came, which Eduardo passed with flying colors. His parents were very pleased and suggested celebrating the end of school at a restaurant. Eduardo agreed, but said he wouldn't be alone. Do you have a girlfriend, son? And for how long? Ilona exclaimed in surprise. Eduardo nodded. For quite a while. Ilona clapped her hands. Why didn't you introduce us? I really want to meet her. Eduardo picked up Marissa exactly at seven. In honor of finishing school, his father gave him a brand new car. Marissa was waiting for him on the porch of her house. She was wearing a simple but very cute pink dress, and she had tried to tame her unruly hair into a beautiful hairstyle. I didn't put on high heels, Marissa said when Eduardo got out of the car. First, I don't know how to walk in them, and second, I don't have any. Eduardo smiled. You look beautiful even without heels, he sincerely said and kissed her. Then he turned to the car and casually asked, By the way, how do you like my ride? It'll do, Marissa said mischievously, and they both laughed. They arrived at the restaurant right on time. Eduardo was very nervous, and Marissa even more so, he could feel her hand trembling in his large palm. He squeezed it tighter, as if saying, everything will be all right. However, things didn't go well. Seeing Marissa's cheap dress and jewelry, Eduardo's mother pursed her lips. Federico also remained quite cold. Ilona asked Marissa what she was doing and which college she planned to attend. Marissa shook her head, admitting that their family couldn't afford it. After those words, the coldness at the table became almost palpable. When everyone finished dinner, Marissa said she had a slight headache and Eduardo drove her home. They were silent almost the entire way. They just need some time, Eduardo said hopefully. Marissa silently nodded, although deep down she knew it was just an illusion, Eduardo's wealthy and snobbish parents would never accept her. At Eduardo's home, his mother showered him with reproaches. How could you get involved with a poor girl, she shouted. She's not your equal. Federico remained silent, but his demeanor clearly indicated that he agreed with his wife. You just don't know her. Eduardo exclaimed angrily. Marissa is wonderful, sweet, funny, and real. You're too obsessed with money and status to see the essence. And I don't care about her social status. I love her. With these words, Eduardo stormed upstairs and slammed the door to his room. Taking a deep sigh, Alona sank into a chair and covered her face with her hands. 
What did we do to deserve this? She murmured quietly. Federico approached his wife and, embracing her, stroked her hair lovingly. Don't worry, dear, he said gently. Soon Eduardo will go to college and forget about that ragamuffin. Remember my words. But it was not meant to be. The day before Eduardo's departure, he disappeared. Elona and Federico were beside themselves with worry and fear. They called the police and told them they suspected their son had gone missing with a poor girl named Marissa. The police began a search, but Eduardo was never found. A few days later, Elona and Federico found a simple white envelope at the front door, containing a note. Dear Mom and Dad, forgive me, Eduardo wrote, but I can't do otherwise. I don't want to part with Marissa, whom I love very much. And I don't want to attend business college. My calling lies elsewhere, I will be an artist, and I truly hope to become famous worldwide. When you find this note and read these lines, Marissa and I will be strolling through Autumn Paris. I'm sorry again. Your son, Eduardo. Ilona dropped the note from her hands and burst into tears. Federico hugged her tightly and didn't let go until his wife calmed down. Since then, they never saw their son again and heard nothing about him. They didn't even know if he was still alive. What a sad story, Letizia said, handing Ilona a tissue. The elderly woman wiped away her tears. Now you understand our state when we saw your painting. It depicts Marissa, that same poor girl we only saw once in the restaurant. But she's impossible to forget. There's something. Sincere, interjected Letizia. Genuine. Ilona nodded. You're right, she replied thoughtfully, her gaze fixed on the canvas. This painting, it exudes a very strong love. Letizia looked again at the girl on the canvas. I feel it too. Ilona excitedly took Letizia's hand. I'm sure the artist of this painting is my son. Letizia remembered the signature left by the artist in the corner of the canvas. Yea, are those his initials? Federico, who had been silent until that moment, suddenly leaned forward. Eduardo Allende. Yes, that's him, he exclaimed with burning eyes. Ilona looked imploringly at Letizia. Please, tell us where you bought this painting. Maybe we can trace our boy's whereabouts. At a gallery in the downtown area of the city, Letizia replied. It was very cheap. I wanted to pay a little more for it to thank the artist, but the owner said the painting was sent to her from Europe. Perhaps he's still there. Ilona said, folding her hands in prayer. Federico stood up and paced back and forth excitedly, as if contemplating something. Please, give us the address of this gallery. We'll go there tomorrow and talk to the owner ourselves. Letizia nodded eagerly. Of course, no problem. I hope you manage to find him. Ilona and Federico sat on the plane, which was taking them to the capital of France. In the elderly man's wallet was the address of the Parisian art gallery from which their son's painting had come. We will definitely find him, I promise you, reassured Federico his wife, and she nodded trustingly. Hope now lived in her heart. Paris greeted them with rain. Arriving at the hotel by taxi, Federico and Ilona didn't waste any time and, despite the terrible fatigue after the flight, changed clothes and immediately went to the address written on the piece of paper. The owner of the gallery, a dark-haired middle-aged man with round glasses and a suit, welcomed them warmly. We've come to you from afar with a very delicate question, confessed Federico. We're looking for our son, simply stated Ilona. He's an artist. His name is Eduardo Allende, added Federico. Does that name ring a bell to you? The gallery owner frowned. It was evident he didn't know how to proceed. After a brief hesitation, the man firmly stated that the name was unfamiliar to him. But how can that be? Ilona couldn't believe it. Federico stared intently at the man, realizing that he was likely lying to them, but there was nothing he could do. The couple had to leave on their own. However, at the doorstep, Ilona turned around once more and said softly, 
If you happen to remember him, please tell him that his parents really want to see him. We, we truly regret not supporting him back then. Federico nodded eagerly. And please, tell Eduardo that we are staying at the Four Seasons Hotel. The gallery owner gave a short nod, avoiding eye contact. The elderly couple left the gallery, feeling dejected and sad. The next day, they decided to take a stroll around the city, and when they returned to the hotel, they saw Eduardo in the spacious lobby. Elona and Federico were speechless. The young man ran his hand through his beard and looked much older than when they last saw him. His haggard appearance and shabby clothes shocked them. Tears welled up in Alona's eyes, and she couldn't help but wonder why Eduardo hadn't been kicked out of such a luxurious hotel. Son, she exclaimed, rushing towards him. He looked at her somewhat distantly, but Alona paid no attention and hugged her son tightly. Eduardo, we've missed you so much. Federico approached and patted his son on the shoulder. Alona felt Eduardo tense up, but the tighter she held him, the more he relaxed in her embrace. Mama, he whispered finally. Have you really forgiven me? Of course, son. Ilona assured him. It's us who should ask for forgiveness. We acted like real snobs. Now I understand how important that girl was to you. I saw your painting, the one with her wearing a dandelion crown. Really? Eduardo looked surprised. Ilona finally released him from her embrace. Yes, and it's beautiful. That painting helped us find you. But why did you sell it so cheaply? Eduardo lowered his head. There's much I need to tell you. Then let's go to a nearby restaurant, Eduardo's father suggested, but the son shook his head. Aren't you ashamed of my clothes? You've never endured poverty, he said softly. Elona felt embarrassed. Forgive us, son, she said. We don't care what you're wearing, Federico added sincerely. We've come to understand a lot over the years, Alona admitted. They headed to a restaurant where they were seated at a table and handed menus. However, none of them even touched it. These three hadn't seen each other for too long to think about food. I did become an artist. Indeed, Eduardo began his story. And quite a good one, Alona sighed. I was invited to various events. My paintings were constantly featured in exhibitions. I was making decent money. Marissa and I planned to have a grand wedding, but... Eduardo suddenly stumbled and turned pale. Ilona anxiously took his hand. What happened? Marissa got sick, Eduardo replied softly. All the money I earned went into her treatment. Ilona couldn't take her worried eyes off her son. And then what, she asked. It didn't help. Marissa continues to fade away with each passing day. She needs surgery. And we need money. Big money. So, I sold everything we had and started selling paintings for next to nothing. Eduardo lowered his head and started crying. I love her so much. But I can't help her. We don't have enough money. Pale Federico placed his cold hand over his wife and son's hands. How much is needed? I'll cover it all, he said firmly. Eduardo lifted his head, unable to believe what he heard. Is that true? he asked softly. Of course, Federico nodded. We're one family, after all. Marissa will get better, Ilona said. And we'll all dance at your wedding. And then take care of grandchildren. And you'll paint a portrait of me and Federico. And Eduardo gratefully smiled at her. Letitia listened to Ilona's disjointed narrative with surprise and joy. I'm so glad you found your son, she said into the phone. But now you need to rest well. You've been through so much. Sleep is the best solution now. After saying goodbye to Ilona, Letitia looked thoughtfully out the window for a few moments. Javier entered and his hands were paper bags with groceries. Kissing his wife, he noticed that she was in some strange mood. Is something wrong? He asked, placing the bags on the table. Ilona called, Letitia responded. She approached her husband and started helping him unpack the groceries. And how are things going? 
Did they find their son? Javier asked, opening a bag of spicy crackers. Imagine that, yes, the girl nodded joyfully. All's well that ends well, Javier philosophically remarked, pecking his wife on the cheek, and then went to the living room to watch TV. Letitia finished unpacking the groceries and joined him. Sitting on the couch next to her beloved husband, she looked at the young girl in the painting. I hope you get well soon, Letitia silently wished her. Dear viewers, if you enjoyed the story, please support the video by liking it and leaving a comment. Thank you very much.